very special guest. It's been a long time that we haven't had a guest at the MD Hot Seat. Uh, our Department of Health Secretary, uh, Secretary Pauline Jean Ubiar. Welcome, yes. Secretary, to the Manila Bulletin. This is our integrated newsroom. Around you are, uh, I think, some familiar faces. We have yes. the DOH reporter, uh, Charina Echaluzzi, our uh, news editor, uh, Gilbert Gaviola, our entertainment editor, Mr. Jojo Panaligan, our uh, desk editor, Mr. Sonny Valencia. Mm -hmm. Beside you, ma'am, is our editor in chief, editor in chief, Junik Ban. Yes. Our uh, uh, business, business editor, mm -hmm. uh, Sir Laurie Cabanos. I'm uh, Mr. Nate Barreto, a provincial mm -hmm. news editor. Thank uh, you. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. We're glad uh, that you were able to uh, visit us. Um, I've heard that uh, recently, ma'am, to get this the ball rolling, uh, with, uh, it seems that your budget in the House has, uh, has been passed. Um, and you'll be uh, raring to, uh, to uh, uh, sit before the yes. Senate. So how, how did that go? How did the budget go? Uh, well, uh, last uh, September 7, we had the plenary uh, discussion of our budget. And I, th I believe in uh, DOH history, it was the shortest deliberation of around five hours. <laughs> so that's the shortest already. Uh, sometimes we would extend up to the wee hours of the morning, mga 4 a.m., 5 a.m., but uh, last September 7, we finished at around 9.30 p.m. And uh, we've, um, we were able to pass the highest uh, budget of the health department ever at 164.4 billion. And uh, this is 9% higher than our current budget of around uh, 154 billion and uh, this represents actually 9% of the total uh, expenditure of national government so we're very happy that uh, Congress uh, indeed supported our our budget for 2018 and we hope that this will uh, really translate to more health services for our people. Uh, under your new budget, ma'am, what would be the main thrust of the Department of Health? 60% uh, of the 2018 budget is dedicated for public health services, meaning that uh, that composes our preventive, promotive, and around 30% uh, uh, goes to hospital services and 10% to administrative costs. How would you describe this budget apart from being the highest? Is it uh, sufficient to us to the uh, agenda that you have for 2018? Uh, yeah, it's sufficient <laughs> <laughs> because uh, as I mentioned, uh, we did present to the president and the cabinet System following the Cuban model, which the president directed me to study and to actually go there and uh, find out uh, how come Cuba is known worldwide as one of the best health systems. So we actually discovered that uh, the main intervention in Cuba is primary health care, meaning that all Cubanos, all the citizens, have annual checkup. Mm -hmm. So we really introduced that uh, since last year. However, because of our lack of health facilities and lack of doctors, we were only able to target the 20 million poorest Filipinos. And we're targeting the 50% uh, uh, of the poorest uh, population to be uh, subjected to annual checkup this year so that is around 50 million Filipinos and uh, when we presented to the president the ideal health system is uh, one health worker and one health facility per barangay and a uh, ratio of one hospital bed for 800 population currently we have one health worker and one health facility for every two barangays. 
but the the distribution is not really one is to two but sometimes there are one health worker five barangays mm -hmm. or four barangays but the average is one is to two and then one hospital bed for 800 population currently we have one hospital bed 2500 population and the disparity is really varied across the country. In ARMM, we have the greatest at uh, 1 is to 4,500, whereas in Metro Manila, it's already 1 is to 589 hospital uh, population no? per hospital bed. So we want the the population uh, hospital bed per population is one is to 800. So with that disparity, we're actually missing 42,000 hospital beds. And we're missing around uh, 20,000 barangay health station because we have 42,000 barangays and around 21,500 Barangay Health Stations currently. And one of the things we also are uh, going to introduce is the polyclinic. That is a diagnostic facility and we don't have that uh, currently. So what we have is RHU or doctor's clinic and then the hospital. But in Cuba, there's the doctor's clinic, there's a polyclinic meaning that uh, that is diagnostic, the x-ray, the laboratory, the ultrasound, and specialist before you go to the hospital. So in Cuba, their hospitals are actually under-occupied, around 60 to 80 percent occupancy, because majority of the patients are already addressed by the polyclinic. So may x-ray, ultrasound, diagnostic, laboratory, and uh, even uh, services are done in the uh, polyclinic. So that's what we want to introduce so that we can decongest the hospitals. I see why you, you smart in saying that this, the budget may not be sufficient. Let's, let's, could we uh, mince that one by one? So uh, there is a shortage in manpower. Yes. So there will be a lot of staffing. How much, how, how many do you, with, with the budget that you have right now, in, in our uh, 2018 proposal, we have uh, included around uh, 9,000, uh, 9, 9 billion in the budget, uh, hiring around uh, 25,000 new uh, health uh, providers. That's a mixture of doctors, nurses, med tech, and midwife and other paramedical uh, professionals because the WHO recommendation you have to have a team mm -hmm. at the primary level to address the healthcare needs of the population and you need um, around uh, 24 uh, varied healthcare providers for every 10,000 population currently we have only 14 per 10,000 population at the front line. So that's why we uh, recommended the human resource deployment program to fill in the gaps. No? And uh, hopefully when we have uh, more health facilities, more uh, fill health income coming into the local government unit, they will be able to absorb those human resource. So yung DOH uh, uh, deployment is just a stopgap. In terms of infrastructure development, ma'am, for, for health facilities, I believe this is, uh, this is not just uh, the sole responsibility of the Department of Health, but also in partnership with local government yeah. and of the DOH under the Duterte administration. It said that there will be public-private partnerships. Mm -hmm. How well is this going? Because this was the same uh, principle uh, uh, drummed up during the uh, Aquino administration, but at the end of six years, mm -hmm. uh, there wasn't much of an impact. How do you see that impact in 2018? Do we have existing public-private partnerships in terms of uh, infrastructure development for... Uh, yes. Uh, currently, we have uh, developed the PPP 
management unit in the Department of Health. So uh, we have uh, capacitated our own uh, personnel so that they can uh, better manage the public-private partnership projects that we will be adopting in the future. We have uh, a number of projects already in the pipeline and um, I believe from NEDA the gestation period is two years for this project because there's a lot of feasibility study, the project development uh, uh, phase, and then the engagement or uh, uh, agreeing on the roles and responsibilities, MOA signing and contracting. Sounds like more than a five hour deliberation. <laughs> uh. Yes, but uh, currently in the DOH budget, we also have allocated capital outlay for our infra and for our equipment uh, uh, to actually move towards the ideal setup, no? as I mentioned. So uh, we have 29 billion in the DOH budget, but... Uh, uh, no, not PPP, infra, capital outlay. But for PPP, we have several projects in the pipeline, like there's a vaccine uh, production facility that will be, actually we're the only country in Asia, I was told, that doesn't have a vaccine production facility. Uh, we just cover all vaccines? That uh, initially, it's just the pentavalent, but eventually we hope to also produce the other vaccines. In Cuba, uh -oh, that's our model kasi, no? Um, they have 17 uh, vaccines uh, that they implement on a public health program. 17. One seven. And they produce 14. Only three are imported. In the Philippines, all our vaccines are imported. These are just five, am I right? Uh, no, uh, currently we have uh, 12. Oh, we have 12. And then uh, initially for the vaccine production facility, we're looking at the pentavalent, so that's five uh, antigens. Is there anything new in this uh, vaccine vaccination program? Any new uh, vaccine? vaccine uh, we're introducing next year the Japanese encephalitis vaccine. What's the deal with that? It's getting the news lately. Is it really a cause for... Uh, I think uh, it was an overstatement of uh, the situation because actually we have percent lower cases of Japanese encephalitis in the entire country this year. Um, Japanese encephalitis is endemic in the Philippines. It's been uh, described here since 1950s. The reason why there's a heightened awareness and in, uh, apparent increase in cases is because we started surveillance in 2014. So when we say surveillance, we started collecting data and uh, we actually, when we do surveillance, we don't collect only Japanese encephalitis. So we describe all suspect cases, meaning all those who have fever, have neurological signs, papasok sa hospital yon. So uh, that's a big population. And then we test each one of them. And uh, only 10% actually are, are confirmed as Japanese kakasakit, ang daming nagkakaroon ng uh, Japanese encephalitis-like. Um, there are uh, influenza, so marami ibang How do they go about the application if there are interested healthcare workers? Yes, uh, we're hiring uh, a varied uh, no, no, uh, professionals, doctors, nurses, midwives, dentists, pharmacists, medtech, so iba-iba ho. But the majority are nurses. Around 22,000 are allocated. Currently, we have 15,000 uh, nurse deployment program 
uh, applicants and uh, hirees. But for uh, 2018, that would increase to 22,000, uh, about 7,000 increase. And uh, if they're interested, they can apply in across the country. And uh, for doctors, we're currently hiring around 300. We'll uh, also increase that to around 500 by 2018. And uh, uh, pati midwife, uh, pharmacist, med tech, opo, uh, mag-apply lang kayo sa regional offices po. Uh, the hiring period is now up to December. The deployment is January to December next year. One year. Yes, uh, that's uh, what we're also uh, continuing. That was started at the time of Secretary Juan Flavier. Uh, we have not attained our Aitor Jaja Tabato seat. Yes, uh, midwives, lahat po yan. When you say competitive, can you give us a figure? Para so mm -hmm. that people will have an idea. Yeah, for a doctor, it's uh, 56,000. Uh -huh. But uh, yeah, we will entry level, but uh, we're increasing based on salary standardization. By next year, tataas po ng mga 70 thousand uh, ang doktor and for nurses i know that's just the salary not uh, other benefits siguro aabot ng 90,000 and then they have field health pa aabot na ng 100,000 ang rural doctor when i was a rural doctor our allowance was 1,600 a month <laughs> uh, sa nurses uh, 28 uh, 29. That's the entry level. Opo. Tapos they have uh, hazard pay and other benefits. Kaya nagre-reklamo po yung mga private hospitals eh. Lumilipat na sa DOH yung mga nurses nila. <laughs> Regular positions po ba yan? Or two-year period din parang sa... Uh, it's... Uh, we're... we're um, uh, parang proposing to DBM that they become plantilla positions pero hindi po siya tenured or may security of tenure meaning that it's for a two year period parang to allow for other health professionals to also uh, uh, get a learning experience from that uh, employment ang ang gusto po kasi namin before they shall we say go to specialization or uh, for nurses, go to masters or explore other uh, uh, career options. Mag two years muna sila sa rural. So that is part of their career development and learning. And then uh, we don't expect them to stay there. no. So there will be a fresh batch of graduates so that it's really part of our uh, culture. Kasi ganun sa, ganun po sa Cuba. Wala pong doktor sa kanila ang nakakapag-specialist kung hindi nag-serve ng two years sa rural. So we want that for all graduates of state universities and colleges bago sila mag-specialize, mag-rural muna sila. Even that services are devolved are these doctors paid out by DOH? DOH mo. They're paid out by DOH, but they report to the LGU. So, parang they, they try to develop the health system at the local level. They attend local health board meetings. Doon po uh, pinag-uusapan yung mga local ordinances on health. And they network with all the uh, local... Uh, uh, government employees like the nurses and the dentists at the local level. Let, let's revert to the budget now. Um, you have a bigger budget for next year. It means bigger budget also for procurement. Mm -hmm. uh, we recall that the president as always has a strong message mm -hmm. when it comes to procurement and she's, he's uh, 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 instructed uh, perhaps change in the uh, procurement procurement procedures. How are we uh, 
are, are we getting mm -hmm. there into a speedier procurement of, uh, for the DOH? Yes, um, actually, uh, since we started, when I started to be part of the uh, Bids and Awards Committee, we've set benchmarks that almost every year we surpass our target turnaround time. So uh, in the Department of Health, we've been able to shorten and shorten that. We used to procure siguro mga aabot ng four to five months. Now our pro entire procurement process is three months na lang. But uh, what we cannot avoid is when there are failure of bid. So you have to have another cycle of three months like uh, what we have now. We have uh, failure of bid of TB drugs. So, nakadalawang cycle na kami, failed pa rin. So, we're now going into negotiated procurement. What's the, pro what's the problem? Um, ang, ang sinasabi kasi nung mga end user, uh, sometimes it's the specification, sometimes it's the uh, agency budget ceiling, yung... yung uh, unit cost and the uh, total budget for the procurement. But uh, I, I, I don't really understand because we've been procuring TB drugs for over 20 years. So why will the specifications um, uh, matter? Kasi yun yung ginagamit naming specifications for so long. The ABC naman, yun, ang basis namin is the previous year's price dadagdagan namin ng 10%. So, nagkakaroon pa rin ng failure. For something commonly procured as TB drugs, eh, ganun ang nangyayari. Hindi lang siya peculiar, for example, to new procurement. You expect there will be failure kasi... Yung, yung specification hindi pa tried and tested yung unit cost hindi pa rin predictable can, can I sir Ms. Mom that uh, <laughs> perhaps the president may, may might have been uh, barking up the wrong tree when he uh, had, had been uh, 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 strongly had the strongly message about the hyperbaric uh, chamber uh -uh. at the AFP Medical Center uh, actually, yes. Uh, uh, well, I don't want to correct the president, but uh, actually, DND already uh, owned up and cleared the Department of Health in terms of procurement for AFP Medical Center. But uh, because of the directive of the president, we've actually stepped in and tried to help the uh, military hospitals and uh, PNP hospitals to procure their equipment. So uh, uh, some of the funds for DOH we've allocated to assist the military and PNP hospitals. But for AFP Medical Center, what the president was talking about, the budget was given to DND. And it took them some time to really procure those equipment. I, I was a police reporter for a long time. This is the uh, puzzles me. Does the DOH have uh, a budget for, for medical legal services of, uh, of government hospitals? My, my, I, I harp on that question because lately with the uh, anti-crime campaign of the government, a lot of encounters and physical uh, encounters have happened. And for example, um, when, when a suspect or, or, or a policeman is brought for, uh, to the hospital for medical legal services, I see policemen before even paying for the medical mm -hmm. uh, services of the, of the suspect or the, or the victim. Um, or the government hospital would source their funds from the congressmen mm -hmm. or, the, or, the, or the senators who support uh, a medical. Uh, is that a part of the DOH? Uh, scheme of fees? Uh, well, I don't know about the the fees that are collected for medical legal, but uh, if uh, we're talking about the teaching training hospitals, 
actually they're mandated to do autopsies. So part of the training of their uh, doctors and health professionals. So uh, many of our uh, DOH hospitals are teaching training. May pathologists sila. So they're not supposed to charge for uh, autopsies and medical legal. Now, I don't know if the LGU hospitals have, because they, they can have an ordinance that they will charge for medical legal. But the OH hospitals, wala po kaming charge. And uh, it's not uh, separated in the budget because it's what they're supposed to do as a teaching training hospital. Nabanggit na rin po yung mga facilities. Naalala ko lang po kasi di ba hindi po tayo pwedeng tumanggi sa emergency cases yes. sa hospitals. Mm -hmm. Pero marami pong nagbaviral. Eh, parang it's also their fault. Kasi we can think uh, capita expenditure ito. We are now one of the eight natin bumaba na to 322 or something per 100,000 population. Then we did the survey last year, no? international organizations ito, umabot po ng 549. So, ibig sabihin nun, uh, parang yung 322, tip of the iceberg lang pala yung nakikita natin. A large majority of TB cases, we do not see. We do not get. So, nagbabago kami ngayon ng strategy natin. But overall, yung life expectancy natin, yung maternal mortality, yung infant mortality, bumababa po. Uh, pero not uh, parang not as uh, low as we expect if we invest. Kasi Thailand po, mababa, uh, mababa na talaga. Because they, they have invested. So there was a problem more in detecting who were uh, vulnerable to tuberculosis. Mm -mm. um, does the DOH have a strong um, partnership with organizations like, for example, uh, uh, the uh, Occupational Health Nurses Association of the Philippines? Yes. Naalala po because I put out the story of their anniversary recently. And then it made me think that these are your front lines mm -hmm. in, in the industries, no? people who work. So, like, for example, my family, yung mga bata, Exposed to the barangay, they get what the mm -hmm. services of government, medical services. Pero sa mga offices, yes, yung mga nagtatrabaho for the family, mm -hmm. and they're the ones who are earning for the family. They most often are the people who neglect their own health. Mm -hmm. So how 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 does the DOH uh, uh, usually ma mga companies kasi they're just required to have a nurse. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, Yung sa ONAP, do you have yeah. a partnership with uh, Yes, uh, we have a partnership with ONAP and with uh, DOLE, Occupational Health and Safety Center, yung OHSC. No? And uh, uh, although our campaign is really annual check-up for all Filipinos, and that includes the, the working Filipinos, dapat may annual check-up because if we do that, then we can detect all um, cases early, pati cancer, pati diabetes, hypertension, and tuberculosis, no? uh, which are really very common illnesses na uh, sometimes dahil hindi nga na detect eh, dialysis na by the time na uh, umabot sa, sa ating health facility. So, we really wanted to put in place really a mechanism that all Filipinos should have annual checkup. And in fact, that was one of the things uh, purported by uh, Senator Loren Legarda in our uh, Senate budget hearing last uh, Monday, na dapat nasa budget na ng lahat ng government agencies yung annual checkup then dapat nasa i-compel natin lahat ng companies hiring uh, uh, individuals na nasa budget nila ang annual check-up for all their employees. So, uh, we're, we'll put that in place so that siguro uh, by the end of this administration, all Filipinos 
whether you are indigent, you are in the informal sector, formally employed, or whatever sector are having annual checkup. Ma'am, may ba tayo? When's your date with the commission on appointments and how do you feel about it? Ah, uh, uh, yes, uh, I just received a uh, notice uh, yesterday that it will be on September 26. And how do I feel? Well, um, uh, I leave it up to God. Sabi ko, I cannot control it. I have no means of actually predicting it or influencing the outcome. Uh, I've been with government for 28 years and uh, ang sa akin lang, trabaho lang. If uh, the members of Congress and Senate would like me to continue working as health secretary, I leave it up to them. If they don't want me, then I'll still continue working for, for the Filipino people in whatever capacity. We have heard a lot about what you are doing. Nothing about drugs. Ah, yes. We're, we're also uh, addressing that problem. Uh, more of, uh, kasi ang DOH is uh, actually in charge of the treatment and rehab centers. So, uh, we're actually in the 1% of the total uh, surrenderers. Kasi 99% will go into community-based rehabilitation. And that is uh, under the jurisdiction of the ILG and the SWD. Ang DOH po, yung mga severe, we take care of the 1% of the surrenderers that would need inpatient treatment and rehab. So we currently have 13 rehab facilities and we have around 6,000 inpatients. Uh, but we're building eight mega treatment and uh, five regional uh, treatment and rehab centers across the country. So yung po yung DOH. And uh, we're also uh, involved in capacitating the local government units to actually uh, assess and diagnose the surrenderers whether they are mild, moderate, severe. So if they are severe, they are recommended for inpatient care and the DOH will take, per, take care of them. But yung training ng local health workers and uh, uh, doctors, uh, the Department of Health takes care of that also. We'll, we'll involve our uh, uh, netizens in the discussion. <laughs> I believe... Uh, uh, currently, we cannot assess, ano, because it's just implemented July. Yung whether there are less smokers, there are more smoke-free areas. Uh, what we're trying to collate now are the number of um, uh, local smoke-free task forces that were organized. Because that's one of the provisions of the executive order. And uh, kung naayos na nila yung mga designated smoking area. So that's what we're monitoring. Kung ilang LGU na merong ganun. So for mga ilan na po yung meron? Uh, wala pa kaming data. But uh, we actually ask our regional office to report those, uh, how many task forces were organized and how many designated smoking areas were established. Uh, yes, um, cancer is a very important health concern and the uh, cancer bill actually uh, ensures that uh, people have access, so mainly funding and also uh, a mechanism wherein 
indigent patients will have uh, access to he uh, quality health services. So we're working for that. Yes. Ah, ganon. Ah, um, kasi what we've actually um, gathered is that the number that they were dialing was wrong. Kasi yung number namin doesn't have an uh, answering machine. Oh. Uh, 804, that's the landline, 4673, that's HOPE, no? 804, HOPE, 4673. Now, for toll-free Globe subscribers, um, that's 2919. Or for texting, 2919. For calls, 0917-558-HOPE. 4673. So, uh, nagkakaroon ng uh, wrong dial. Kasi I, I think uh, we've uh, seen some feedback. When they dial, there's a uh, voice recording that's answering. But, but we don't have voice recording in our phones. It's live uh, people answering. And uh, we're 24-7. So, uh, we're really trying to to find out why there are uh, they're, they're saying that uh, uh, our, our responders are not picking up the phone or are not uh, answering uh, their queries. Kasi may training talaga dyan and we're 24-7 there's about uh, 8 hours shifting in the 24 hour period. So, hindi sila yung Sabi natin, pagod sila, kaya hindi na sila sumasagot ng telepono. Uh, shifting naman yon So, uh, we're, we're trying to also perfect this system, ano? Uh, upgrading it. And we welcome the feedback because uh, that will also tell us if we need to put up more lines or put up more people uh, in these uh, services. But the first hope line that we established is the one in Cebu. And it's actually been there since 2014. So, medyo uh, mas maayos yung services in the Cebu uh, hope line. Kasi naayos na nila. And then we've constantly supervised and retrained our responders. Dito sa Manila, we're just uh, barely one year. Uh, oh, September last year na launch and we're really trying to address the kinks and the uh, issues. Sir, kumustahin ko na rin po yung ano, quit line naman. Kung marami po bang tumawag after i-implement yung smoking ban? Mm -mm. Yung ating uh, smoking quit line, uh, they're averaging about uh, 20 to 25 calls per day. Oh, ito yung number. Uh, but uh, uh, ang nag-increase sa kanila, because you can also text, uh, they're, they're using more of the text. So it's uh, 165364 for landline. But for texting, that's 292-90 165364. Yeah. So there's more texting than calling in the quit line. Kung mag text kasi, what happens is that you are guided on the steps towards quitting. So 
and also you are reminded there's a message that goes to your cell phone that this is what you should do or uh, 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 this is to remind you that you are now 14 days uh, from the time you quit, uh, keep up with the good work, etc. Yes. Oh, parang you're enrolled. Yes. Yes. There are, there will be questions that will ask uh, that they will ask you yung sa text. And then after you've answered the questions, parang you're enlisted na. Actually, we don't have a line list or uh, surveillance going on for suicide because it's really taboo, no? And it's if, if it reminders, uh, it's a uh, rainy season. We want to prevent wild uh, waterborne and uh, foodborne diseases, so usually diarrheal diseases, yan. No, we boil our water if we're not sure about its uh, um, safety. Uh, cook, uh, eat only uh, cooked food or recently prepared food. Number two, influenza. Madalas po ang ubot sipon, trangkaso during this time. So uh, cover your mouth when you have cough and colds and uh, eat the... Uh, plenty of uh, fruits and vegetables and uh, take eight hours of sleep or rest. No? Yung staying healthy will prevent uh, uh, viral illnesses like flu and influenza. Number three is L. Ito po, ang dami kong nakikita sa TV, ano, nung nagkaroon ng bagyo, nagsiswimming po yung mga bata. Uh, leptospirosis is a real disease. It's a real threat. Mga nanay, mga tatay, wag po natin pabayaan ng ating mga anak na maglaro uh, sa tubig baha. Kasi pwede po sila magkaroon ng leptospirosis. And for all our uh, kababayan, wag kong lulusong sa baha kung kung maiiwasan mag boots or uh, use other means but kung nakalusong po kayo sa baha make sure pag ahon nyo po maghugas soap and water no yeah, immediately and then if you develop uh, fever and uh, yellowish discoloring punta agad sa doktor para maagapan yung leptospirosis wag na pong magantay na hindi na kayo umiihi kailangan na i-dialysis. That's one of the danger signs of leptospirosis. And uh, D is dengue. And hindi lang po dengue, all mosquito-borne diseases actually increase during the rainy season. Nandiyan po yung chikungunya, nandiyan po yung ating Japanese encephalitis, and uh, Zika is also mosquito-borne. Pero wala na ho tayo masyadong nare-report na Zika cases. So, all mosquito-borne diseases. So, ang payo lang po namin, yung 4S pa rin natin, seek and destroy mosquito breeding places. Very important, number one uh, strategy po yan to reduce uh, uh, mosquito-borne diseases. Uh, seek early consultation. Kung linagnat po tayo, magkaroon tayo ng rashes. Uh, magpatingin agad and uh, self-protection uh, insect repellent uh, mosquito nets or uh, uh, screen sa bahay uh, so that we can protect ourselves from mosquito bites and say no to indiscriminate fogging hindi po fogging ang sagot sa uh, mosquitoes kasi lumilipat lang po sila Seek, uh, search and destroy po talaga ang number one na magpapababa ng uh, mosquito population. So, wild. Uh, W-I-L-D. Iwasan po natin ngayong tag-ulan. And our uh, main message to everyone, all for health, towards health for all. 
health is everyone's concern and not just the doctors or the health professionals. Lahat po tayo ay kasama sa kalusugan. All for health towards health for all. Thank you. Thank you. And with that, we'd like to thank the uh, Secretary uh, uh, Pauline Jean Kupial. Thank you for joining us. Wala naman kayong relationship with the NDF or how? Ah? Ah, uh, yung komunista? Ah, okay. That is uh -huh. the only reason those two have uh -huh. to go. Eh. Wala naman.